Horrible today. Yellowstone emits as much carbon dioxide as an erupting volcano, is it erupting soon? Yellowstone National Safe emits as much carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as an erupting volcano, based on analysis from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. However, the amount is still not as much as humans produce. Measuring Yellowstone's emissions levels is a challenge because there are no plumes of gas to examine, as is the case with erupting volcanoes. The national park is also vast, with gas spread over an area twice the size of Rhode Island, the state scientist in charge of the observatory, Michael Poland, wrote in a news report. But geologists were able to measure emissions by focusing on the soil around the travertine hot springs and chloride-neutral spring areas. By doing this, they were able to calculate the overall carbon emissions levels in the national park. They found that Yellowstone releases as much CO2 as some actively erupting volcanoes, such as Mud Mountain, which sits at the base of the Yellowstone caldera. Collectively, Total emissions in Yellowstone are 24 metric tons per day, the news report said. Poland told Newsweek that scientists knew Yellowstone had high amounts of CO2 from previous measurements. In the early 2000s, this amount was measured in the same way, by looking at soil discharge from thermal areas. In fact, Previous estimates were higher than the latest estimates, Poland said. Several calculations have been carried out over the past 20 years, and they all show high levels of CO2 emissions. This is an example of the importance of what we call diffusion, degassing. Not all volcanic CO2 is released during an eruption. In fact, most of it is emitted by non-erupting volcanoes. Of course, a lot is also emitted by erupting volcanoes, but just because a volcano isn't erupting doesn't mean there is one. No CO2 is emitted. While this amount of CO the 2nd of May seem large, it is actually only about 10% of the amount produced by New York City, the report said. In general, Yellowstone emissions are not as harmful to the atmosphere as human-caused emissions. All volcanic CO2 emissions combined, including eruption and diffusion, are still less than 1% of human emissions, Poland said. Recent research really emphasizes the importance of removing CO2 gas from thermal areas in Yellowstone that are older and have experienced significant temperature reductions. We might think that these areas don't emit much CO2, but their emissions are just as large as warmer areas. Carbon emissions produced by Yellowstone do not significantly harm the environment, Poland said, although there have been some animal deaths likely caused by the emissions. In 2004, several dead bison were found near Norris Geyser Basin. And in 1897, an area called Death Gulch was discovered with several dead animals, including a grizzly bear. Especially in winter, during periods of low winds, inversion layers can form and CO2 can be trapped in low areas, which may be the cause of the death of these animals. It's important to continue monitoring carbon emissions in Yellowstone because it can show how much magma is beneath the volcano. Scientists can then track what is happening beneath the surface. It is also important to document overall CO2 emissions in this day and age. I can't count the number of times I've seen someone claim online or on social media that a single erupting volcano emits more CO2 than humans have in the entire world. The entire history of the Earth, Poland continued. This is clearly not true, and we know that CO2 is something we can measure. Measurements like those at Yellowstone show the type of CO2 emissions at the volcano, and also how much those emissions contribute to global CO2 levels. 
And it's clear that volcanic emissions are tiny compared to human emissions into the atmosphere.